Oh, good day, folks, and welcome to another edition of Lumberjack Logic Live. It's good to see all of you on. I see 132 of you on already. Please do me a favor, smash that like. Do chat in with where you're from to help get this stream rolling. Big shout out, big thank you to you all uh, for supporting Mike Lindell and his efforts, the election integrity efforts, both through uh, donating to the uh, uh, fund to... Uh, you know, for carrying his case forward, that's at lindellplan.com. And then also for uh, buying his product, utilizing promo code Lumberjack, and also which is for, the uh, double dip, right? Because you get to support the show. You get to, no, it's the triple dip. Excuse me. You get to support the show. You get to support Mike Lindell. And you get to save big money. That's right. Up to 80%. And with promo code Lumberjack, you can get those per kale sheets still for $39.98 and get free shipping on your order. All right, let's get into the news. So um, I talked about this a little bit this morning, but I did not realize something. So Stephanie Lambert, she's an attorney out of Michigan. Jake Lang, who's one of the January 6th prisoners out in, uh, well, he got moved from the D.C. Gulag to a different uh, facility. But anyways, Stephanie Lambert was also representing them in their class action case out there. Matt Cassoni, good to see you on. Lorenzo from Brooklyn, good to see you on. So, um, yes, it turns out that she's not only the attorney from Michigan involved in dealing with the sheriff out there, that Sheriff Darleaf, and I've got more on that too. This gets pretty exciting, but she is also leading the class action lawsuit for the J6 prisoners. And I believe, I've been trying to find out which specifically, but I believe this is the, uh, the, the case where they commissioned the study by survey to show that there was no possibility of getting a fair and impartial trial in Washington, D.C. for these J6ers. See, because a bunch of the people, the residents in D.C., as they went through and did that survey, a bunch of them want to see these people hung. That's right. They think that they should be executed, along with President Trump. And that was the majority of D.C. residents. So how are you going to get a fair trial out there? It was fully up to close to 90% of them felt that they had engaged in insurrection. Well, if you've already determined that they've engaged in insurrection, how do you say that they didn't engage in insurrection when the facts say otherwise? Once a person makes up their mind about something, it's very difficult. It's very, very difficult to change it. Again, 1,099 on, 337 likes. Do me a favor. Please smash that like. We need to get this story out. I actually think this is one of the biggest stories in America right now because what Sheriff Darleaf did out of Michigan was he opened Pandora's box and now the deep state is in a flat out freak out mode, okay? So what you need to understand about Stephanie Lambert is not only is she working with Jake Lang and the J6ers, acting as their attorney, but she is also the person. So after the election back in 2020, Dana Nessel and Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson. So Jocelyn Benson, I believe it was sent out the order to remove the files on the thumb drives. Now you're like, what? Why would you remove files on the thumb drives? Don't you have to keep these records? I'm just saying. So anyways, so uh, obviously it turns out that the county clerks in Michigan have the ability, the power to oversee their own elections and oversee that investigation. So Stephanie Lambert and others were like, no way, we're not destroying this. We're not getting rid of this. So instead they worked with local sheriffs. And it turns out, I just found out four sheriffs in Michigan. It's not only Sheriff Darleaf, but four sheriffs in Michigan are working on this. Now, apparently they're working with other countries across the nation. Okay. Now, so they, they arrested her. They said that, in fact, I'm going to go to an article here from, from uh, USA Today. Michigan lawyer and Trump ally Stephanie Lambert faces voting machine charges after arrest. Michigan lawyer Stephanie Lambert was arrested Monday in Washington, D.C., 
The arrest came after she failed to turn herself in following a bench warrant issued for her arrest more than a week ago in the criminal case alleging she illegally accessed voting machines in the wake of the 2020 presidential election. So this is exactly like Tina Peters, okay? Um, Christy, good to see you on. I love to see my mods. Christy's on. And independent many. So, um, very much like Tina Peters out in Colorado, but not quite the same. Because... All they did was retain the files, retain that information, and then they turned them over to uh, local sheriffs and other people. They've been working to, uh, you know, press this case. Lambert was taken into custody by the U.S. Marshals in a U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia courtroom, according to Brady McCarran, a spokesman for the U.S. Marshals Service. Lambert was in court on, in Washington, D.C. on Monday to represent former Overstock.com CEO Patrick Byrne in a separate lawsuit. Byrne, who participated in failed efforts to overturn the 2020 election, faces a defamation lawsuit from Dominion Voting Systems. Now, this is really bringing them out of the closet because, you see, they have the communications... The emails from Dominion, I shared those on another stream, okay? We're not getting into all those on this stream, but as of Tuesday morning, Lambert was in custody of the Metropolitan Police Department. Police spokes, department spokesperson Tom Lynch wrote in an email that she was charged with fugitive from justice, a holding charge. Now, somebody said she was actually in the D.C. Gulag. I don't know if that's the case, if that's exactly where she was, but anyways, that's... uh. I'm trying to confirm all this information. It's coming out pretty fast and furious. In the case against her in Michigan, Lambert, an ally of former President Donald Trump, failed to show up for a court hearing in Oakland County on March 7th regarding a court order issued several months earlier requiring her to undergo fingerprinting with which she had not yet complied. A bench warrant was issued against Lambert. During a hearing on Wednesday... Judge Jeffrey Mattis, presiding over Lambert's case, denied a request to set aside the bench warrant after Lambert had days to turn herself in. Lambert is fighting the fingerprinting order in the Michigan Court of Appeals. In court filings, she argues, so here's her side of the story, that her failure to appear for the March 7th hearing was not willful, citing a communication breakdown with her previous attorney. She also argues that the fingerprinting order violates her right to due process and asserts that the special prosecutor in the case against her will improperly use the information to compare with evidence collected from voting equipment she allegedly handled. Among her efforts related to the election, Lambert participated in a Michigan lawsuit that served as a vehicle for conspiracy theories. This, again, is out of USA Today. About DVS and was also involved in an unsuccessful legal bid spearheaded by Sidney Powell to overturn President Joe Biden's victory <laughs> in Michigan and award the state's Electoral College delegates to Trump. Amid legal setbacks and cases related to 2020, Lambert traveled across Michigan to convince local officials to conduct their own election audits. Late August, Lambert, last August, excuse me, Lambert was indicted by a grand jury for allegedly joining other Trump allies in a conspiracy to gain illegal access to voting machines after the 2020 election. She has reportedly blasted the special prosecutor's review that led to the charges. She has accused Democrats of trying to silence her in a plot to keep Trump out of office in a video posted to her Telegram account on the eve of her indictment. When Muskegon County Prosecutor D.J. Hilson announced the charges against Lambert last August, he noted that he took the unusual step of petitioning to convene a grand jury. These charges were authorized by an independent citizen's grand jury, Hilson said in a statement at the time, protecting the election process of the utmost importance for our state and country. He called the prosecution an important step in that direction. Now, what's interesting about all this, so now you guys have the uh, USA Today version on this, but Hilson, from the people I talked to um, out in Michigan, Jake Lang just texted me, actually, uh, but um, they do not trust Hilson at all from my sources on the ground in Michigan. And the other thing is what I find fascinating about all of these cases, all of them, and this is why the main decision was so big. Uh, that was out of federal court up there that election records are not 
that, that they are, we can FOIA those. They're, they're not some vast secret thing. And that's what they've treated them since, like ever since 2020. Everybody who has tried to gain access to images and files and paper ballots okay, to audit this have been treated like criminals. And that's what's happened to Lambert here. Now, interestingly, she worked with the local officials. Okay, she worked with the local officials who oversee this, who oversee the elections. And as you well know, the sheriff in a county is the top law enforcement officer. So if there are potential crimes, she turned those over to Sheriff Darleaf. This has all come to a head this last week because this is now in Jim Jordan's hands. This is the biggest case in the nation right now, the biggest news story, and nobody's freaking covering it. It's driving me nuts. Okay, like where is Fox News? Where is Newsmax? Where is anybody? Okay, good to see you on Seashell Mac. Nobody's covering this thing. So the only place you're getting this news is over on X, okay, over on Twitter. But back to some other things involving this. Uh, so again, Patrick Byrne is in a set, she's representing Patrick Byrne, she's representing the J6ers, and she has also been working with the sheriffs in Michigan. Smash that like if you would, please. Let's get this out. Let's get this stream out. So there's three really sensitive things that she is working on as an attorney that are send, that is sending the deep state into overdrive, okay? So that is Patrick Byrne's defense against the Dominion lawsuit. It's the defense of the J6ers against the, the unfair prosecution in Washington, D.C. And it is also the case taking place in Michigan with Sheriff Darleaf. Um, all of this, and, and this all comes on the heels of the sheriff turning this all over to Jim Jordan in the House Judiciary Committee so that she can, and actually, so I got good news. She is out now. She is out. This just happened. This is kind of breaking. Uh, since then, uh, she was released. Patrick Burns said attorney Steph Lampert had a 1.30 p.m. hearing today in D.C. and was released. Okay, so she was released now. The warrant was on a misdemeanor, one she'll clean up in her next appearance in Michigan. Under Michigan law, there are not arrest warrants on misdemeanors. That is illegal. Soros, Michigan AG, and Dominion cooked this up, is what Patrick Byrne said. So that's what we're dealing with, people. This, this warrant, there's, there's no arrest warrants on misdemeanors, and yet she's getting one. Not only was she getting one, she was arrested in Washington, D.C. and fell finally released at 1.30 today. Do you guys get what's going on here? Does everybody get what's going on? Because we are approaching the most important election of our lives. And there is only one hope right now, people. There is only one freaking hope that somebody gets out there and exposes more of this. Oh, I've got a huge story out of New Hampshire. I almost forgot. People, you want some, you want some good news? Oh, I just got this and I'm waiting for the stuff on it, I, but I'm just going to run with it. I, I've got pictures and everything. I will do a video on New Hampshire. Please watch for an upload on New Hampshire. But I just talked with my sources on the ground in New Hampshire and Wyndham, they screwed up the election again. Not only did they screw up the election, they got a picture. They're going to get to me of one of the people. <laughs> this is wild. You're going to go like, no way, Neil. Yes way. Listen to this. One of the people who was on the ballot, in other words, one of the people that was up for election handling the ballots. We've got the picture. <laughs> I'm not shitting you. So they screwed it up again in Wyndham, New Hampshire, and now we've got a picture of one of the candidates actually handling the ballots. Does that, does that seem right and reasonable to any of you? Yes or no? Yes or no? Now, this is on the heels, if you guys didn't know, Dan Richards has a case at the Supreme Court of the state of New Hampshire, okay? So he's got this case at the Supreme Court in the state of New Hampshire, and Dan Richards' case is being uh, deliberated on by the judges, okay? And they made, a, they made a law while judges were deliberating at the Supreme Court which is against the law to make a law while judges are deliberating on the very foundation of that law. So another illegal act taken out in New Hampshire. They're going to give me all this information so I can put together a better report for you. 
But man, I am telling you, New Hampshire is like ground zero for all this crap. Oh my gosh. I mean, not that Antrim County, Michigan is holding back. Look at that. We're up to 4,413 people on smash that like. Get this news out, people. I'm telling you what. We have got to, there are, our, our, our only hope, people, is to get Trump back in office. But then, did you guys hear the cabinet announcements for Donald Trump today? Did you guys hear about this? I'm just, I can't, I can't, oh my gosh. According to faux news, now, I, I will say that sometimes they have some pretty good sources to report on this, but Donald Trump is considering Kevin McCarthy for his chief of staff. This is this is the news on the ground, people. People, give me this one as a yes or no. Kevin McCarthy for chief of staff in President Trump's administration. Yes or no? Gosh, I'm going to just come down. I'm a solid no on this. Maybe you guys think, hey, no, I love Kevin McCarthy. He's proven to be so good. He's an upstanding, upright dude. I love Kevin McCarthy. <laughs> okay, wait, 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 wait. Let me see here. I've got his cabinet picks too, according to this report. Let me get it for you here. Uh, Trump uh, cabinet. I just, I lost the... Uh, cabinet. Okay, I'm going to get this for you here right now. All right. So we have oh, Vivek Ramaswamy as the um, Department of uh, DHS, Department of Homeland Security he had Vivek Ramaswamy. This thing is not coming up. Um, that was another one. I'm okay with that one. I mean... What do you guys think about Vivek Ramaswamy as the, uh, um, here we go. I've got it now. Uh, Vivek Ramaswamy as Department of Homeland Security head. I'm actually good with that, with everything he's talked about. Um, a lot of people don't trust him. You know, I saw him speak. I mean, I saw him actually when he endorsed President Trump the first time out in um, New Hampshire. Here's, a, here's one I really like. So this, according to Fox News, again, so you know whether this report is accurate or not, I'll leave this up to you. Ted Cruz is Attorney General. Yes or no, Ted Cruz is Attorney General. This is my favorite of the picks right now. Ted Cruz as Attorney General. I'm a big yes on Ted Cruz for Attorney General. Hands down. So I want to see where you guys are at. Yes or no on Ted Cruz for Attorney General. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of yes on Ted's. Okay, good. You guys agree. Um, another option they had down here as Attorney General is Mike Lee. Um, I want I would like to see Mike Lee in the administration, but I don't want to get Mike Lee up in the Senate. All right, here's the rumored VP picks, people. <laughs> Trump's rumored VP picks, according to Fox News, include Tulsi freaking Gabbard. Yes or no. You can probably tell where I'm at on this. Tulsi Gabbard, yes or no? No. Thank you. I see people are agreeing with me. Anti-gun grabbing Tulsi Gabbard. Byron Donalds, yes or no? Yes or no on Byron Donalds for potential VP. I'm a big, I'm a big yes on Byron Donalds, just so you know where I'm coming from. I'm a no on Tulsi. I am a yes, yes, yes on Byron Donalds. This is my favorite of the lists, the list he has down here. Okay, good. So we got a lot of yeses on on, uh, on Byron Donalds. These comments are flying by so fast, folks. I, I, I'm not seeing them all. But um, the, the other options here, okay, I want to see. Okay, now, okay, good. So I see a bunch of yeses on this. Okay, so now I want to see on the next one, I'm going to have you put in the person's initials in a yes or no. So I'm not getting the same for Byron Donalds or, or Ted Cruz. Christy Nome. So put in K-N, yes or no. Are you yes or no on Christy Nome for vice president? I do like the fact that Christy Nome is a governor. They typically make good executives. So um, Christy Nome, yes. I got yes, no, no, yes. My gosh, these are flying back. Christ, 
Christy Gnome. Boy, she's like a 50-50 on this. No yes on Christy Gnome. Okay, so here we go. And the other one... <laughs> I just want to get, let these comments fly through really quickly. All right. I want to make your vote now. Christy Gnome. I got okays. I got no. I got yes, man. I tell you so. Right now, in the Lumberjack Logic poll on a live stream, smash the like if you would too, please. Christy Gnome is like a 50-50... Byron Donalds was really the top choice, and Tulsi Gabbard was a straight no. So the one more of the four. Here we go. The last one. <laughs> Tim Scott. Tim Scott, T.S. T.S., yes or no. T.S., yes or no. Okay? I want to know. Put the initials in. T.S., yes or T.S., no. I, I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm big on Tim Scott right now as a vice president candidate. He's about 50-50. No, 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 no. We're getting more no's now. Tim Scott is a no. And more Christy Gnomes coming across as no, too. Tim Scott, no. Okay. All right. So Tim Scott's running, I don't know, not even quite 50-50 from what I'm seeing. I'm seeing more no's than yeses. It looks like about a 60-40 split on Tim Scott. Okay, so by far and away, so far, out of the four picks, President Trump, uh, according to this rumor by Fox News, uh, Byron Donalds is winning. Okay? Now, here's the big kicker. And I'll see if I can get these comments, if I can kind of see them fast enough. Um, if you want to, like, highlight a comment, even you could do, like, even just a $2 super chat or something, but... Okay, here we go. Here's one. This Because this is the next question. So John got it before I announced it. John Sprott says, Carrie Lake. So now what I want you to do, um, thanks for that super chat, by the way. Um, do this. Tell me, oh, I got another one. I got Carrie Lake. Oh, he's up there twice, like he did two. I don't know if he meant to do that. But now, put in the name of the person, so outside of this list of four, who do you want? Just put their name in the chat. Who do you want as Trump's vice president pick? Okay? I am seeing a lot of Kerry Lakes right now. Okay? I'm just watching this fly across. Okay, let's see here. Um, Ted Nugent, Lee Zeldin, Tucker, uh, Doug Mastriano. Wow, there's, see, this is the thing. What's interesting about our movement is there's a lot of people to choose from that are much more conservative than the people on this list. Now, I, you know, I guess the thing about this is 5,728 of you on now. Smash the like if you would. By the way, if you just joined the stream, we were doing news earlier. Stephanie Lampert, who is a prominent attorney, not only for the J6ers, but also for election issues in Michigan. And she's also defending um, Patrick Byrne in his Dominion suit. Uh, was arrested, but now released. I see Tucker. Uh, I see Stefanik. I see Candace Owens. Mike Rowe. Wow, Mike Rowe, that's an interesting one. Don Jr. Um, Trey Gowdy. Get rid of Trey Gowdy. Come on, man. He turned into a Fox... Doesn't he sit on Fox News? Is bored even? He turned into a Fox News commentator, and he tried to act like he was something, but really, at the end of the day, he was just good on TV, but really didn't do the right voting and such. I don't trust Trey Gowdy. He looked like he turned into a complete uniparty hack, rhino establishment dude. Kerry Lake is big here with you guys. Don Jr. is big. Um, yeah, no to Trey. Look at that. Everybody's agreeing with me on this whole Trey Gowdy. I see Sarah ha Sanders Huckabee. How many would like to see Sarah, you know, the governor? She's in Arkansas, right? I keep getting all the states screwed up. Is she Arkansas? No, Tennessee. Which one is she? Oh, hold on. Kid Rock. <laughs> Seashell Mac says Kid Rock. There we go. Uh, we got Kid Rock from Seashell Mac. Thanks for that $2 super chat, uh, Seashell. Um, I saw some Mike Lindell. Wouldn't that be epic? Can you imagine the freak out on the left if Mike Lindell was the vice president pick of Donald Trump? Another super chat here. Don Jr. for training. Then he will know what to do. I like Don Jr., but I'm not into political dynasties, people. I'll just be honest. I'd like the Bushes, 
you know, all of them. I don't like political dynasties. I, you know, that's kind of like royal families. Too close to royal family to me. By the way, I keep seeing news come across about the royal family crap. What is that? Kate, Kate, Kate. Always trending across Twitter. But I think it would be Arkansas. Thank you. I knew I wasn't right on that. Sand Sirius Sanders is Arkansas. Thank you. Arkansas. All right. Um, so uh, Sarah Sanders, that could be good. Lisa Bailey. Hey, thanks so much for that super sticker, Lisa. Uh, how about Neil Johnson? <laughs> Pissed off Canuck. I don't think I am on the radar. I'll just be honest. I'm kind of small time out here. I know I've got my great audience, best audience on all of YouTube, smartest, the best, the everything. But as good <laughs> as you people are to me, thank you. But I don't think I am on the radar. Um, I have run businesses, so executive experience, I'll give myself that, but uh, might not be as good at international politics. I just tell Ukraine to go pound sand. <laughs> this is so I'd be like, get out of here. I don't have time to talk to you. I tell you what, though, I could be a good border czar. I, I guarantee you, people, I would be a better border czar than Kamala. Do you guys think I could be a better border czar than Kamala? Yes or no? Better border czar than Kamala. <laughs> Neil for squeaker of the mouse. Oh, let's see. Putin. I know Putin's got his own job to do. By the way, he won in a landslide. Landslide. Um... Rand Paul, that'd be pretty epic. Um, so, yeah, Neil Johnson for press secretary. That one I could do. I could actually handle that. But he's got a good press sec secretary um, who I met out in New Hampshire. So, she's got the job. She's doing all right. Um, but uh, anyways, I just, I was really, I was really frustrated when I found out that Stephanie Lambert was arrested. But now she is released, which is big. The news story is getting out there. Uh, the sheriff in Michigan is doing such a great job. So thanks for joining me on the stream. Remember, check out my sponsor, MyPillow, MyPillow.com, promo code Lumberjack for big, big savings. Thank you all for joining me on this stream. Catch you on the next episode. Peace out.